Okay, uh, thank you very much, Nick, uh, for the invitation and uh, thank you for um, having me here today. Uh, happy birthday uh, to, uh, to Jack. And uh, I, I'd like to take um, uh, some uh, kind of a myopic uh, view of um, uh, Jack's long and foot for career and just uh, focus on the, on the benchmarking. So these are uh, some of the uh, projects that I, uh, over the years, worked with Jack, and the um, and I'll try to uh, uh, to uh, show my my view of the um, of these projects and 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 their perspective in the uh, in the wider uh, scope of things. So um, let's start with the um, uh, with the motivating the kernel benchmarks. It's because the uh, these are uh, benchmarks that involve small uh, pieces of um, of code that they're possibly taken out of applications. So uh, there is this uh, famous quote by uh, Rodney uh, Rodney Brooks that the uh, the problem of simulations is that they are doomed to uh, to succeed. And this was uh, this was in the in in a, a little a little essay that was trying to uh, to motivate that the uh, simulations need uh, need a lot of verification to make them to make them honest to make them uh, to make them uh, accurate. And if, uh, if I allow myself uh, to uh, kind of um, take a whimsical non sequitur of that, of that first statement and just say that the, uh, the problem of benchmark is that they are, they are doomed to, to succeed. So once you make a benchmark that measures something that you want, I mean, you will, you will eventually make it succeed. So let's, uh, let's, take, a, let's take a view of, of some of the benchmarks and how we actually uh, try to make them, make them useful. And the, uh, and the reason why we try to make the benchmarks useful is something that uh, the Lord uh, Kevin uh, wrote uh, quite, quite a while back. This is a very, very lengthy quote that just basically says that, uh, that we, need, uh, we need definitely to measure things uh, in order to be able to, uh, to make progress uh, of science. And uh, this, this uh, famous quote by Lord, Lord Kelvin was later um, nicely summarized by Peter Drucker, he was, uh, was a manager, and basically just says, if you can measure it, you can improve it. So that's the, um, that's the basic uh, uh, mo motivation for, the, um, for, for writing benchmarks. So uh, uh, ba back in the day, before the, uh, the disco music was, was a thing, if you look at the, um, uh, if you look at the codes, you could, you could barely tell that uh, on, on the screen, uh, on one side, we have, uh, we have a benchmark and on the other, we actually have a, 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 piece, of, um, a piece of application. So of course, on the, uh, on the, on the left is the uh, Linpax uh, version of the, uh, the LU-based uh, solver. And on the right, uh, we, have, uh, we have something that, uh, that, is, uh, that uh, used to be uh, used for a benchmarking and it was the, the Livermore loops. So back in the day, this was basically uh, uh, th this, uh, these, these two codes were, um, uh, were uh, uh, kind of uh, look, they looked the same and they, uh, they also performed in, in a similar fashion. So they kind of motivated uh, what, what happened next. So in, uh, in risking to uh, uh, a copyright infringement, I'm gonna, I'm gonna now uh, steal uh, Jack's uh, famous uh, picture uh, that, that shows the, uh, the first uh, Lindpack report, where, where Jack reported the, uh, uh, the performance numbers of, of a few computers of, of the era. But I'd like to focus on this, on this 100, a 100 number that was used for the first, um, uh, for, for this first uh, test of the, of the, of the Lindpack benchmark. So the way I, I, I try to explain this to, to myself is look at the, uh, the uh, kind of numerical analysis kind of post World War II which was which was uh, dominated by the by the work of uh, von Neumann and 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 in Goldstein in the forties and fifties and the and the sixties and so they were they were trying to do is uh, giving the the estimates of of uh, conditioning uh, conditioning of, of of random matrices so we already heard about uh, random matrices during during Jim's talk and the um, the uh, and the von Neumann mostly used it in the um, in the sense of um, uh, in quotes, but um, but he was trying to give an estimate on the order of of, of n for the for the condition number, and so so you can see that the uh, the estimates or as the um, as the the uh, they was they were called back then the expectation, expectation. Uh, of the, uh, of the 
Okay, the expectation okay. value expectation of the of the conditioning were were uh, all over the place, but the the value of 100 kind of uh, chosen for the initial impact benchmark kind of guaranteed based on the analysis of the day that the solution will be will be accurate. Of course, the uh, modern uh, random mat matrix theory is much more uh, advanced than that, and and below I just give a few uh, a few of the um, uh, citations that uh, uh, advance this. Uh, random uh, random matrix theory that now we know that given the uh, Gaussian distribution of the matrix entries, uh, we can give very uh, very tight bounds or a probability estimates that the condition number will be within a specified range. Uh, so uh, th that was the uh, kind of uh, the, the first size of the matrix, which was around which was around uh, one hundred. Uh, but uh, but later on, the uh, the the work of of Roger Hockney. Uh, formalized this this work and introduced the concepts such as the uh, uh, the r infinity and half and and max and this was kind of based on the uh, on the on the fact that the, uh, the these these things were uh, similar to the uh, nuclear decay and the half life of of different unstable elements and uh, you could you could um, Generalize that for uh, for solving the, the systems of equations. So right now, if, if you look at the the shape of this curve, you can recognize that this as a as a, as a roof line model. When we have the uh, the initial ramp up of the um, of the performance uh, with the uh, with the arithmetic intensity right here, or the or the matrix size is is, is low, and then we have the uh, asymptotic asymptotic behavior. So this is this was one of the uh, the first. Uh, references that, that that mentioned that so um the, the the problem however with benchmark and focusing on one number is, is something that uh, machine learning now uh, knows very well and it's the uh, they call it the uh, the goodhart's law so it says that the any observed statistical irregularity will tend to collapse once pressure is placed upon it for control purposes again it's a complicated way of saying it but another way by uh, by Marilyn Streifner was that the uh, when a measure becomes a target, it, it ceases to be uh, to be a good measure. So let's uh, let's look at the uh, the, uh, the 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 pack benchmark and how it uh, uh, how it compares with the uh, uh, with the peak performance on the uh, uh, some of the top 500 machines on the recent top 500 list. So you can see that the, the green line is the HPL performance and it is very closely uh, tracked by the by the peak performance uh, right uh, right on top of it so that that's uh, focusing at this point at the at the Lindpark benchmark is almost uh, almost um, equivalent to focusing on the peak performance of the machine so um, it's so, some time back we actually started to, to look at the other uh, ways of measuring the uh, the performance that would augment the uh, uh, this um, uh, this Lindpack uh, Lindpack number, and it was it was called HPC HPC challenge. So in there we included um, multiple matrix, including the uh, the Lindpack number uh, right here in the upper right corner, uh, but we also included the the FFT stream and and random access. So the location of these of these graphs is not uh, is not uh, random. It is actually positioned in the uh, on this uh, kind of a, a space of a locality in, in temporal and and, um, and special locality where FFT reuses the elements in in time, uh, stream benchmark reuses the uh, its uh, elements of of matrices and vectors in in in, in space, and random access uh, attempts to uh, to generate completely random locations in memory, so it has no reuse either spatial or or, or temporal. But you can see that just a very a similar fashion to the uh, to the aptic in, in the Lindpack performance, we saw that uh, the, the the metric that Lindpack was was measuring the uh, uh, metric solution was uh, was growing exponentially, and so did the performance numbers uh, of other uh, of other uh, of other benchmarks. So uh, in a way, that the, the trend was uh, was uh, similar. So uh, later on, we actually try to focus on the uh, the uh, applications uh, that are uh, kind of more important in in, in scientific codes. For example, the uh, the, the uh, partial differential equation solvers. And so um, 
So we worked with the uh, Michael Rue from the Sandia National Labs they, on the high performance uh, conjugate gradients benchmark, uh, where we solve a very simple uh, uh, Laplace uh, equation uh, with a non zero boundary condition, and that creates a 27 point uh, stencil and, um, and then solves the system using a, a conjugate gradient. And the advantage of uh, using the, uh, this particular solver that it introduces uh, all, all kinds of uh, artifacts in, in both in the codes and in terms of um, hardware behavior that the uh, original ben uh, Linpack benchmark uh, couldn't measure. And, and this is especially true because in the uh, preconditioning part portion of the, of the CG benchmark, uh, we use the uh, multi-grid uh, and, uh, and the gauss seidel symmetric smoothing. And if, uh, if, if you look at the, uh, the, all the steps, that the system has to go as, as it goes through the through the iterations. Uh, that there are those multiple grids that refine and make the uh, make the memory access patterns much different from what is experienced in the in the Linpack benchmark. And if you try to uh, observe the behavior of HPCG and and its scaling on on the machine that doesn't really have uh, a good network and uh, uh, and and latency also is. Uh, is dependent on the amount of traffic and the uh, and, and messages. You can see that the uh, the scaling of the of the uh, uh, of the performance is problematic, and and in and the uh, there is there is large spread of the of the values, and there's even splintering of performance on larger core counts. So that's what that's what the uh, the HPCG me measures, and that that is uh, and that is a better uh, uh, a better metric to measure performance uh, of, of the machines. And so uh, if we look at the, the, the same graph that I showed before in top 500 and try to uh, plot the HPC, H HPCG numbers now together with the, um, uh, with the peak performance and uh, with, the, uh, with the HPL, uh, you can see that the, uh, we, have, uh, we have drastically a different picture. So, um, uh, the first thing uh, observe uh, we can uh, observe is that the the blue line that represents uh, represents the uh, HPCG performance it's much lower than in the other two lines so we have a tremendous drop of uh, of performance and this is what is what is expected due to these uh, very uh, challenging uh, memory access patterns and the and, and the line is uh, much more jagged so some machines uh, do uh, do much better than than others in uh, in in doing this this particular um, in, in performing this particular solve. So, um, however, as as Jim already mentioned, the uh, there are a lot of uh, new workloads, especially mixed precision workloads that are coming on the uh, in the uh, in hardware hardware scene because of the machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence uh, workloads. So if you look at the uh, uh, the typical uh, uh, GPU uh, that is that is used for uh, machine learning, that would be Ampere A100 uh, from Nvidia. If you kind of take the uh, somewhat um, uh, somewhat um, different view of the of the different uh, units that are in the in the, in the GPU, uh, you can see that the integer uh, 32 and FP32 units are very useful for mostly uh, graphics and gaming. And the uh, and the gaming version uh, RTX version of this very GPU uh, does very well uh, does very well in the in the gaming market and in fact it's uh, there are still on on uh, short supply and still a uh, trend very high on if you want to buy one on eBay because they do very well in in this uh, low end uh, workloads uh, and uh, if you look at the on the right and the various uh, uh, implementations of the tensor core. Uh, they have in this GPU that is mostly um, that is mostly dedicated for machine learning and AI workloads. And only in in the center we have a very limited number of units that are dedicated strictly to the 64-bit arithmetic. And this is uh, roughly what what science would like the 64-bit precision for the for the solution. So um, so this is a kind of the challenge to uh, to have this uh, mixed precision. Um, a makeover, so to speak, as, as Jim already mentioned in, in communication avoiding uh, <clears throat> mixed precision algorithms, we'd like to use the mixed precision to uh, to use it in solvers while while maintaining this FP64 uh, 
uh, accuracy. So the uh, some of the uh, un unusual data types that were uh, they were now present in the uh, Ampere A100 processors, such as the TF32, are not even visible externally, and they are only uh, available as uh, compute types inside the inside the GPU. So. Um, uh, and, and this is not just the uh, not just the uh, one card from Nvidia. If you look at the on the right the history of of Nvidia cards, this is already a fourth uh, named generation of Nvidia cards, starting with Pascal. The uh, is this limited precisions and and different implementations of floating point were already present in in different in different forms. It started just with one a simple FP16 units that weren't really all that accurate, and with Volta. The tensor cores introduced um, uh, all kinds of modes of computing when internal representation can actually deliver more precision and is definitely not on the um, IEEE map of uh, of different floating point uh, data types. And with with Ampere, the number of different uh, ways that the tensor cores can operate even increased. And uh, Jim already also mentioned that there are a lot of startups that try to do a much more efficient. Uh, machine learning in in directly in hardware. So here is just uh, there's just a la laundry list of the ones that um, that I that I happen to uh, to to be able to get the uh, reliable uh, news report about. And so so some of them you uh, you probably heard, and uh, some of them are actually already uh, deployed and 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 doing uh, doing science at, at various uh, various locations. So we have the the graph uh, graph core Habana uh, Cerebras. Blaze, Grok, Sambanova, and uh, Tenstorin. So they all have this uh, mixed precision uh, kind of a uh, way of, of doing things. And, and the, uh, the more limited and faster the precision, uh, the better. So uh, the, uh, the way to use that is to use the, uh, the uh, seminal work now by, the, by Aaron Carson and Nick Hayam, a three precision iterative refinement, uh, where we use the uh, uh, GM res. And the, uh, that is that uses 16-bit uh, preconditioning, and these 16-bit uh, LU factors that precondition the uh, uh, the, the precondition the, the iterative process. And so, if we uh, if we if we look at this, uh, this is in this in this very preconditioner, we can uh, utilize uh, you can utilize this this different mixed precisions uh, as long as we take care of, of proper scaling. And kind of looking at the uh, uh, gym uh, box, try not to uh, uh, propagate the, the bad values and, and uh, take care of the uh, limited range of, of these values. However, in the end, we'd like to deliver exactly the same 64-bit precision as the as the original Linpack benchmark, uh, because we want to uh, we want to kind of be uh, comparing uh, apples to apples when it comes to performance, knowing that the solution is is accurate, roughly the same number of uh, of, of bits. So we look at the, uh, the the graph that I was showing from the beginning, and we look at the further uh, augmenting it with uh, even more values. So now we have the uh, the the peak performance with the black, the uh, Linpack performance in the green, and HPCG all the way in the bottom. But now we can show that the uh, some of these machines on top 500 also report the HPL AI, and they actually exceed already the exaflow barrier. So that kind of offers a very wide um, wide and broad view of the uh, of different uh, performance uh, characteristics and they kind of uh, uh, reflect the uh, the needs of the of the application so uh, that that would be my my slide i most of this information is uh, available on this on these websites uh, so i'd like to uh, i'd like to thank jack for uh, many many years of very uh, very fruitful uh, work together. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for letting me in, in into your and your group and the uh, and and working with you uh, all these years. So uh, for those who uh, do not know, I uh, I met Jack in uh, well actually I shook Jack's hand in uh, 1999 uh, when when I arrived from my uh, home country of of Poland. Uh, to the uh, uh, blistering hot August in 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 Tennessee, in Tennessee, it, it it's very uh, very hot and 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 humid. I I walked in the in the office and uh, shook uh, shook Jack's hand. Back at that at that one time, I I dared to call him uh, Professor Dongara, to which he uh, immediately responded, "Call me Jack," 
And uh, that's what I called him ever, ever since. Uh, but uh, the little known fact is that, that this is not the first time I, I met Jack. I met Jack in um, uh, two years earlier in uh, 1997. And uh, this was a uh, Euro uh, uh, PVM MPI meeting. It was happening at that particular year uh, in uh, Krakow, Poland. This is my home city. Uh, where uh, where I was uh, uh, where I was born and the um, and the during the uh, the, the conference uh, uh, Jack was uh, 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 decided to uh, to hit the local uh, uh, bar uh, scene and uh, see if uh, ha how he likes the the local uh, uh, Polish breweries and and what they make and so uh, he was going towards the uh, the old uh, old town. Also in Krakow, but of course he wanted to be back in the hotel on time, so he uh, he asked me uh, what is the last uh, uh, last bus uh, going back to the uh, to the hotel. So with my with my broken English uh, back in the day, I, I I gave him that that information, and he went on on his merry way. And at that point, I turned to my uh, to my friends and I said, uh, "Did you hear that? I I just said something that even Jack Dongara didn't know." And so that's uh, that concludes my talk. Thank you. <laughs>